What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Final Circle Podcast. This is officially episode number 39, special quarantine coronavirus edition. Just kidding around, but uh, definitely talked a little bit about that. Um, But also some new stuff in the gaming market, news about Xbox Series X, PS5 leak, which actually uh, came out, the information about PS5 after we recorded this podcast, so we didn't have that information while we talked about Xbox versus PlayStation, Call of Duty Warzone, PUBG, Doom Eternal, a bunch of stuff coming out, so pretty much just a video game podcast across the board with a decent amount of talk about uh, Warzone as well. And just if you guys have been listening to the podcast, just to let everybody know, um, we've been having some issues with recording the podcast. We do this over Discord online. Uh, We're in two different locations. We both have the same microphone, which is a uh, Blue Yeti. But sometimes the microphone, it's in stereo the entire time, but occasionally go to mono. Trying to work on a fix. I don't know why that occasionally happens. It doesn't happen when I record audio normally. It just only happens when we're doing this over Discord. So we're going to be looking um, to fix this and hopefully we can get that done soon. And also, if you're watching on YouTube, there will be some gameplay in the background for everybody. If you're listening to this uh, via the podcast app, which it is available on iTunes through the podcast app, then you will just hear the audio. So um, thank you all for listening. I appreciate it. And let's get into the episode. All right, so Andrew and I are here on uh, with episode number 39 of the Final Circle Podcast. We're almost at uh, episode 40, which is pretty awesome. And this is a coronavirus special edition of the podcast, our first one since the explosion of the coronavirus, I guess is a good way to put it, because we were going to do a podcast during the cancellation of E3, because you guys were going to go. And then yeah. now some time has passed and now coronavirus has like seriously exploded and everything is canceled. Um, restaurants, bars, work, everything. People are working from home now in the U.S. Really, I mean, we're not sheltered here in New Jersey, but we might as well yeah. be because of how serious uh, everything is right now, right? Yeah, it's cl- it's pretty close to it. Yeah, we're getting close to it. And I think New York will probably be in the next two days, but... Yeah, I mean, it was for the best that they canceled E3, I think. Yeah. There's too much uncertainty, like, you know, even though it's in June and things can be pretty well cleared up by them. Um, yeah. There's just, I think, like, for companies, it's probably so hard for them to make a decision to go buy, like, the booth and all that stuff that they need to show up there. If they if it was going to be canceled, like, they could have really extended some companies. So I'm sure that they were just like, yeah. listen, play it safe, you know, because I don't know if I really... if. It, even if they started opening it again, like would I have really wanted to go and, and I would have wanted to go. I wanted to go regardless. I just think it was like the yeah. better. It made my decision easier, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, that's true. I think they probably made a bunch of people's decisions a lot easier by just canceling it because it is the, ins- you know, that's a good point. The uncertainty with everything is probably the most confusing at this point because like even for me, uh, personally, you know, we're getting, we're, we have plans to get married that could get canceled. That's in May. We have our honeymoon, which mm-hmm. we booked a flight for, but we, uh, we, we usually do that. We book a flight like really early out yeah, and then, and then like, we'll fill it with hotels and stuff. And like what we want to do, like we start researching, like, I mean, we do like initial research, we book our flight and then yeah. like, we kind of like make an itinerary and book everything after like, you know, reservations for like a day trip or something. Right. Yeah. So like we were ready to book all that stuff. Like we had, a, we made a whole itinerary for our honeymoon mm-hmm. and now we're like, I'm not going to book a hotel now. Cause what if like that, then it's more things you have to worry about if it gets canceled, like even for yeah. our wedding, like we don't want to buy any decorations now because what if it gets canceled and we have all these decorations and stuff. <laughs> then you, then so you like, have to just reschedule it. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of weird. So it's kind of, I know that's a personal version of it, but like, yeah, if you're a company and you spend all this time planning the event, you know, getting ready for people to travel and, and set up a booth and all this stuff and then for it not to happen, is, yeah. it's kind of a pain in the ass. No, yeah, it's definitely, yeah, if you're a smaller company, it's a lot of expenses and stuff like that. I'm sure a lot of companies were just coming in and being like, dude, we can't do this. And, and they probably were like, you know what, like, yeah, not worth it to, yeah, you know. Yeah, for for a bigger company, not as bad. But you're right for smaller companies and a lot of the independent studios. I mean, who yeah. knows? Plus this, plus the. For, I mean, we're skipping over the obvious reasons of however many people would congregate there sixty thousand, seventy thousand plus people. Yeah, there's so, a ton of people that go. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of crazy I mean, stuff, man. 
hopefully next year it's still a thing. You know, I mean, I'm sure it'll be a thing next year. I don't. It's not going any away. But you know, hopefully, yeah. like they cover everything. All these events recover next year and don't have any issues, which I think they will. I think they might actually make a bigger comeback. You know, but you always see like E yeah. three is dead tweets and stuff like that, and in reality, it's not. There's like same, well, pretty much the same number of people went year over year every you know every year so yeah i I was thinking though like i wonder like i don't really we don't have to get into all this stuff but i don't really know like i know there's like a party or a group of people or a commission that like runs e3 but i don't understand like how they like i'm guessing they make money off the event somehow by the vendors and stuff showing up so like i wonder if they're like how how their situation is like not having the event this yeah. year. yeah i'm sure yeah. it's esa so it's like the like sport like entertainment Support, uh, something industry i can't remember or should have googled that but uh, you know it's like the people that are on yeah. the board is like you know um the the guy from microsoft um phil spencer is like one of the board members and you know what i mean and like so is the ceo of bethesda okay so i think it's probably it's fine i would say financially i'm sure microsoft just dumps money into those things um like but I, I guess what they, it. yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I'm sure like E3 is like where they make their money back, you know, like because they get the venue and then they probably charge a little bit more for these companies to be there. And it's a big yeah. marketing event for all of them, you know. Yeah, for sure. It's just yeah, a fun uh, time. yeah, yeah, it seems cool. Uh, for anybody listening that isn't aware, um, only a couple, only within the last year or two, E3 started allowing people to the public or opening up to the public to go. And Andrew went last year. And, uh, I was, you know, people from the stream and myself were kind of hoping to go and meet up. Um, uh, it w- was looking like I wasn't going to make it cause of my honeymoon and the wedding and stuff, but, um, Andrew's still planning on going this year and then obviously going to cancel. He's not. So hopefully, like you said, it will come back and, uh, strong next year. And the video game industry as a whole is going to be pretty interesting, you know, as everything, yeah. uh, slows down, there's been so many memes of everyone just staying home and gaming Yeah, and, uh, then we got the launch of Call of Duty Warzone on top mm-hmm. of it. There hasn't been any big game launches recently, so yeah. um, it's been kind of quiet. And then Call of Duty Warzone, I mean, people knew it was kind of coming, but they, they sort of also came out of nowhere because they didn't really... Yeah, they're very a, big. Yeah, they didn't give like a date or anything like that why, before they launched. Mm. So uh, it's pretty interesting. And also as a streamer, dude, I was wondering, I'm like, what is streaming going to be like? Because... Um, everyone's going to be a lot of people aren't working a lot of people are home like is is everyone just going to be online what is you know is it going to be good because people are working from home so they can watch the stream yeah. like i was wondering like i don't know if it's going to be worse for me or better for me i don't know yeah i say yeah i think probably majority of people are just working from home or but yeah i understand it's definitely yeah. a different landscape there's a lot of uncertainty yeah, because for most people, I mean, you watch the stream. If you watch it early morning at night, you might just be relaxing, so you're not yeah. gaming. But for I think the vast majority of people watch during the day while they're at work and they, or like passing a certain amount of time if they're on a bus or a train or you yeah. know what I mean. So uh, you know that's what I was worrying about because if everyone's home, they're just going to be gaming themselves too, which is fun though and good for everybody. I saw um, I don't know if you saw, but Steam had the most people oh, on I saw that, at one yeah. time or something or logging in a day it was like 20 million users at one point or something yeah that's pretty crazy, crazy right? right yeah, yeah. that is crazy it's funny i mean I, I just like in like thinking about it like even like disney released uh like the last jedi on saturday or something like that like they just are taking advantage and stuff and i feel like they're just like i yeah. just, just let it go like i bet companies like like uh oh my god project red or whatever um cd project red which is like cyberpunk 2077 okay yeah they were supposed to come out in march and they they pushed it back to september so oh yeah I'm didn't sh- they um didn't they come out and say that uh, the witcher season two is like one of the first shows to get shut down is that what you're talking about by the coronavirus no oh uh, uh, no no cd project red is making making this sh- the game cyberpunk 20 cyberpunk 2077 and they were yeah. supposed to come out in march like they're probably oh, yeah. like oh, shit. We missed such a great opportunity to release. Oh this game. my bad, my bad. You're saying yeah because it got pushed back to um, this fall. Oh, so you're saying yeah if they would have came out in March, they would have got crazy sales. Uh, yeah, true, and I think true, true, I think true, that true. like you know like Disney just was like mm-hmm. doing the opposite. Like Rise of Skywalker was supposed to come out like Tuesday on digital, but they released it like Friday night. So I that see, way so people would have it earlier. Yeah. Just take advantage of the fact I that like. Saying. 
people are going to be watching shows and, and all this stuff and bored. So they're like, let's just get another weekend in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, let's yeah. just get it. So Yeah, dude, I saw, I see movies now are getting canceled, right? Yeah. Like uh, movie releases. And uh, someone from the stream, shout out to Seeker, told me that his local cable provider, like that they, they get their TV through. Yeah. Uh, unlocked all of their movies like they sent out Ooh. a message to all the users in their area i'm not going to give up his location but um yeah. that like you can just watch movies for free now isn't that kind of wild yeah i mean dude I you know, like people hate corporations but in reality like a lot of times there are people that are running cor- corporations or like the majority of people in corporations are just people like you and me you know so true so true yeah you know, so there's only a handful of them that are like, I would say, like maybe a CEO or two or, or like very greedy, like the yeah. Jeff. Bezos. But just like everybody, most people you meet are nice, but some people are going to be rude and greedy, just yeah. like corporations and CEOs. You're right. That's yeah. a good point. You're going to get a mix of people, you know, I mean, it is what it is. But, you know, but yeah. most people that work at those places are, are just like you and me. Like, the, probably a lot of the people that make big decisions are just like you and me. And, that's a good point. Yeah, I saw. You know, it's hard because you. It's this could be fake news and stuff, but I saw like um, I guess this is a lot of topic, but we're here anyways. Like the Delta CEO said, like he's gonna forgo his pay so that they can help pay for like worker other workers. But then, on the flip side, I saw like stuff getting shared on Twitter of like a bunch of companies that aren't doing that. Like McDonald's is gonna pay workers. I mean, I didn't look into it. it could be fake news. Yeah, like, people are boycotting McDonald's and this and that. Like. I don't know. There's so much know, information out there. The money. Yeah. Sorry, I spoke over here. What'd you say? No, I was just saying there's so much information. But what? No, I was, I was pretty much done though. What were you saying though? I just wonder if some of these companies even just like have the money to do that sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, McDonald's but McDonald's does. McDonald's, I mean, McDonald's should. Doesn't. Yeah, they just so are. Much money, dude. I haven't been to McDonald's for in years, but yeah, they should have the money. I think yeah. some of these other companies, like some small companies, I, you just don't know if they have the money to do it, you know? Oh, that I get. Yeah, that I get. Like the NBA, uh, like the one player from the NBA uh, that's paying all the salaries for the people that work at the stadium for the remainder of the season and stuff like that. Yeah. Like people do nice things, but I think like the NBA should have done that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, sort of. They were saying like, there was someone tweeting out like, what about the the billionaire owners? Shouldn't they be like helping? Oh, yeah. Too? Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? like that, that too. I just don't, I think like the people that probably own a basketball team or sports franchises are like actually the biggest douches in the universe. <laughs> That's just the way Mark, I view it. Yeah, Mark Cuban has been doing a lot, but he I, I mean people He's have mixed views on him. I like I like Mark Cuban, but I, don't really, um, I think he just He's doing yeah, some I don't know. stuff. He said he he, did, he was like the first person to come out and say that he was doing something for them. Like yeah, right away I mean, like day one. I don't hate him. I just think sometimes like I hear him talk and I'm like, this guy just made a lot of money and now he thinks he knows everything. Yeah, he's a little and, arrogant. Yeah, he's a little arrogant. Like he was like saying something about technology one day and I was like, dude, you have no idea what you're talking about right now. He's like oversimplifies things. You know what I mean? Like it's like you just put it on a server and you know, you're like, what? (laughs) Yeah, it's not yeah, not always that easy. But I mean yeah, definitely a smart dude to some extent. Oh, he yeah, exactly. He's definitely a smart dude, but stay in your lane kind of thing. (laughs) Stay in your lane, bro. But uh but yeah, I mean, how do we get onto that? Oh, talking about video game releases and stuff. So yeah. um, Ooh. Yeah, it's kind of nuts. What about um, so? Where should we start? You mean you want to talk about? We got Xbox. Let's talk about. You want to talk with uh, start with Warzone because it came out last yeah, week. Yeah, we could. Yeah, have we you could played it that. at all? Yeah, I played with you on Friday. Did we play? Oh, it's right. We did play. I wow. feel like yeah, we were taking. I forgot we were taking you through uh, Warzone because you'd only played like a match or two. One right? game because kinda... yeah, the servers were really slow in the first couple of days. Like remember, yeah. I could we couldn't get into a game for it was like taking twenty minutes to load into a game. But then they fixed okay. it, so it's been really good since yeah. then. I haven't played it since this weekend. Yeah, I mean, but... it's um, what do you what do you think about it so far? I liked it. I think it's very sh- stressful compared to like you know what I mean. It's it's like yeah it's very stressful the whole game because you're just there's just constant um battling going on which is fun i just think it's it's very different than like a call of duty or not call of duty sorry like a PUBG or it's more yeah. like an apex kind of uh speed i would say in a way but more um you know just with the call of duty background and stuff like yeah. that but just gameplay wise like speed and pacing and how much fighting is going on you know? yeah, I agree with you. If you could slide, it would feel like you're playing Apex. It's like this. I mean, you can slide a little bit, but you can't. Not like um, the, yeah, not like an Apex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apex, you like slide down a, the whole side of the map. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, it's like, but 
Yeah, I mean, you're right. It's more like that than PUBG. I mean, it's real. it looks realistic. The guns and stuff are like PUBG because they're real guns. You know, they're yeah. not made-up weapons and stuff. But, uh, I mean, I'm sure there's probably some made-up weapons. Who knows? But, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I like it a lot. You're right. It's definitely pretty hectic. I made a video today about my, like, just going over my opinions on it because a lot yeah. of people were just, like, sharing their thoughts on the game. And it's, it's definitely um, a smart game. I think they did a great job going from Blackout to this. Yeah, and they did a lot of things that I, I wanted to, that a lot of people have been saying someone should do, like you know, you spawn with a pistol. Mm -hmm. uh, they got they simplified healing. There's really no healing. There's just the armor plates. The looting is yeah. easy. Like they 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 kind of made everything that's frustrating about. I mean, it's still a really frustrating game, but they took like the annoying parts parts of Battle Royale and kind of like fixed them a little bit. Like you can soften them. I would say, yeah, say, yeah, they like softened Battle Royale a little bit and. um they even pushed the boundaries. I mean, they added in uh, when people shoot, you can see them on the radar. They, you can buy a UAV, uh, you know, kill streaks. Yeah. But to me, I remember this is kind of funny. I mentioned this in the video. Not that it matters because mm -hmm. it's like there's no one's fact checking. But when Blackout came out, I was saying I feel a little bit like a little redemption because I kept saying I'm like, I don't know why Blackout would come out and they don't have anything like from Call of Duty in it. Like, why not put loadouts or why not put this kill streak or UAV in, and I think yeah, you know, Blackout yeah. had some of that stuff, but like, why not Just utilize like what the game is like made around? You know what I mean? Yeah. And everyone's like, "Oh, you can't do that. It's battle royale. You can't do that." And then look at what, like, you know, Apex Legends added that kind of stuff, and now Call of Duty, like the revive and stuff, and now Call of Duty, they did this modern uh, modern warfare. I mean, Warzone, and now it's like the most popular game. So it's like, I think they kind of evolved yeah. it, and they put their, they finally put like their own. Uh, Call of Duty touch on it, so I think it's yeah that they did. That. I think Blackout was a good first iteration, you know. Yeah, me too. It it was good. It just was. It just didn't feel. It felt like Call of Duty was trying to like emulate Battle Royale when this game it feels like they made it, like they did their own version of Battle Royale. You know. Yeah, I kind of wonder like Blackout. for Blackout. I feel like it was more rushed decision to make it. Probably, you know I mean? yeah. Yeah, and I think that they were like, "Well, what could we do?" And I think what they did was, with putting the um, like all the uh, like different maps together was a really cool idea. I just think everything in between was a little bit um, uh, crappy. You know what I mean? This yeah. like they needed more kind of to the map. I think, um, but I think it was a good idea. Like they did a good job. I just you know this one definitely seems a little bit more polished. Yeah. I like that the map is this map. I remember playing Blackout and there used to be, just be like some areas of like giant fields that like suck to get caught in. Yeah, you're and in This you're map in is Yeah, this map is really urban. I kinda like that. That there's yeah. so many buildings. Yeah, because otherwise Call of Duty is like very easy to aim in my opinion. Like much more easy to aim, you know, than yeah. mm -hmm. PUBG or something. Uh so oh, yeah, sure. it definitely makes a big difference. Yeah, it feels like you're playing one giant I was saying you know, that it kind of feels like you're playing one big, like, cooperative multiplayer match of Call of Duty because you can get revived so many times. Like, not saying you will. You could just get squad wiped and that's it. But, yeah. like, there is a possibility for you to get revived two, three, four times. And because of that, almost feel and, like, because the map is, there's, like, really tight sections of the map that there's a lot of buildings. It almost feels like, all right, you're in a multiplayer area here. And then there's, like, those weird missions you can do. Yeah. Um, like, contracts. It's, like... It's, it's got this interesting take to it, and um, it's a pretty big map. I mean, and 150 players, and it runs really well. There's, you, I mean, you could, you could talk about Warzone for, like, hours. I feel like you could talk about this new game. It's pretty yeah. interesting. I mean, I didn't notice any um, real issues with lag or latency or desync and stuff like that. Um, no, me neither. Really, I mean, I I'm really sure the haven't. more you play, I'm sure, I'm sure every game suffers from like some desync. But you're right, I, I definitely did not notice any frame loss really when I was playing. No, I didn't notice anything. I mean, and yeah. I, I use like, and it's funny because like I used to work at the company that did the servers for Call of Duty, and I, I know that they have a lot of server locations. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of other things that like go into it and. They have yeah. like they made sure that they have good coverage. They probably have the highest quality of servers. You know, they ain't using like the old ones. They're making sure they're getting the newest ones. And you know, they have a lot of buying power. So the company would go out and buy like, hey, we need these. And like, if we didn't have enough, we were going out and buying them. You know what I mean? So yeah, 
you know, they're, it's, they're, yeah, they're like seriously fun. prepared and like have a plan sort of, of like what's yeah. going to happen. Sounds like they have a department that's dedicated to making sure these games run like on these servers, you know, like PUBG probably has like yeah. five dudes, you know? So it's, there's a big difference there. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you know, uh, to take 150 people, put them in a game is still not an easy feat, even with like a, a lot of people, you know, even like you know, to run the way it is, in my opinion, it wasn't necessarily the easiest thing in the world to do. I'm sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I wonder how they, uh, you know, obviously it's the graphics are different now they've, with this new engine that they've been using for a little while with yeah. Blackout. So the it doesn't, it kind of almost has an apexy vibe of like, yeah. not cartoony, but it's definitely different. I think that helps them with the rendering of everything and loading, right? It's got to, whatever yeah. they do. Yeah, they definitely have it. So it's not as like, it may not be as realistic looking i guess you could say but it's yeah it i mean the guns look good but like the characters and some of the stuff looks a little cartoony but then not a, not cartoony i i don't have a great word for it. it looks like i don't know just different yeah doled down maybe i guess i don't know yeah. i know what you're saying though it's just not it's not like it's trying to be realistic but the scary thing is is that like they're not and it still looks like more realistic to me than PUBG in many cases uh yeah PUBG, <laughs> well PUBG, PUBG looks realistic. Sometimes it looks great. The guns look incredible in PUBG. Sometimes the players look good. Other times they look like you're playing Dreamcast or something. And uh, <laughs> the guys you know don't I mean? blink or something. Say. Yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah. It was super a the face on there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it's just different. Um, but they did a good job. It's it's definitely really fun. The Gulag thing is a great. Yeah. The buying back is a good idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. The gulag's really cool. And you know what I'm saying is uh, that kind of also, like, you know, people don't use pistols a lot. Like in PUBG, people like get rid of the pistols or make them have a point. And sometimes you spawn with a shotgun in the gulag, but it's mostly pistols. So actually, there's like, it's nerdy to think about it like this, but there's actually a reason like the pistols in the game. And uh, like, there's a reason to be proficient with the pistol because then if you're good at the gulag, you could always get back with your team. And if you don't know, I think if you're listening to this podcast, you probably know what the gulag is at this point, but when you die in um, Warzone, the first time you die, or maybe the only time you die, you go to the gulag and you can you become a prisoner of war and it goes the option to do this goes away if it's under 25 players in the match but because there's 150 you have plenty of time to do this um you go in and you you 1v1 another person and if you win you go back into the game if you lose you spectate and um your team still has an opportunity to buy you back into the game which is pretty cool and if the way they did it is pretty genius um the whole system is pretty well done i'm sure there's some flaws with it like everything and I'm sure some of that stuff could be balanced out. Like right now, I think you can get bought back like infinite amount of times at any point in the game. Like maybe they'll cap some of that stuff. I don't know. Uh, maybe they'll change the cost. Like maybe your first revive cost one price and the second revive costs more. I don't, you know what I mean? Unless they want you to come back a lot. But right now it's interesting. And I think uh, once they start balancing some things, it will get even better in that game. Some of the systems they have set in place. Yeah. I guess my only real question is, is like, what is the support system going to be for this? You know, is this going to change again next year or is this like going to be it for a while? True. I would like, yeah. I mean, that's a good question, man. That's a really great question. Because if they're doing Call of Duty Warzone 2 or like the Black Ops Warzone, like, come on. That's just, they should just end it here, I think. Yeah. They're really, you know what I mean? Temporarily. They'll be beating a dead horse at that point. Yeah. Yeah, That's I'm very question, curious. Man. Yeah, I mean, question. we've asked this every year, and it seems like we keep getting the same answer. So I wouldn't be surprised. But yeah, it's like I, pointless. I, even yeah, we asked it with blackout. You're right. We talked about this during the launch of that, and yeah, everything. Just, just coming back around. But I mean, yeah. hopefully this is it because it kind of did it separately and differently. But I mean, then again, it's tiered. To, it's you know um, tethered to your like custom loadouts in Modern Warfare. So you know, ouch. Yeah. Maybe they'll change yeah. it though. Make those. But you can make you can make the loadouts without having the game though. I think right. You don't have to have Call of Duty mm-hmm. Modern Warfare to make the loadouts. I don't think. Do you? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't, I don't know either. So. But the the loadout either. thing is kind of OP because you get your you get I your know, perks so attached. Usually guns. And you have like beast gun level uh, with like all the attachments and stuff. That's a weird system because yeah. I like that they did it, but they didn't restrict a lot of stuff. So like people can pop in with like 
you can basically get a loadout immediately. Um, all you have to do is loot a couple things. You don't have enough money to pay for a loadout for your entire squad. So if you guys are like try hard players that have been playing Warzone, have crazy kits, like within the first five minutes, your whole team could have like a perfect setup, which yeah is definitely a little OP. They, they're probably going to have to balance that out or make it more expensive to buy your loadout in the game yeah. or something like that. Because it really makes it hard for like a casual player to, you know what I mean, to totally. buy into the game or stay around. Because the whole point is like a battle royale is that everyone's pretty much on the same playing field and stuff yeah leading. you should be you know and it's like oh this guy's got a, like all this stuff and like on their gun yeah. the thermal scope and stuff like that <laughs> yeah this, that's what you get to like they did a lot of stuff it's smart um but then it's like did they do too much like so i was watching a youtube video like hey I, i'll admit that, like i'm not on the up and up about every little thing you know with with warzone because i'm still in like PUBG mode um but I was watching this YouTuber who's like all Call of Duty stuff and he I didn't know this because I'm out of touch and I don't, I don't play Call of Duty anymore that like the certain guns you can change the ammo that the gun shoots. So this guy was like saying that you use the AUG but you switch it to 556 five, ammo that it actually becomes like the most powerful, fastest like time to kill gun in the game. But I'm like dude, I didn't even know you could switch ammo types on a gun in your loadout like this. Then to me like I know that sounds weird, but like once the game gets like really crazy with too many options, eventually there's like a point, there's like a point of no return with options or like of utility, like scum options, like little options, good, more options, better, insane amount of options that like nobody has time yeah. for. I feel like ruins the game or oh, 110%. You know, it's 100, 110% the, the, the true because it's just, just like, like a curve. Yeah. Like I remember, like, what was it? One. Uh, Call of Duty has just so many different perks and stuff, and it's just like, uh, yeah, because then you get people who are like, all they're doing is going online, and someone's like, oh, if you use this perk with this perk, it's broken, and and it, if and then everyone starts using that combination. Then if you're not in the know, you're like, why am I losing every fight? You're like, oh, you didn't know that this perk and that perk is kind of broken. It's in there; they haven't patched it yet, and whatever, yeah. blah 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 blah, and uh, it gets kind of annoying to me. But uh, that's just, I guess that's in everything, every game. But again, yeah. going back to PUBG though, like PUBG's might be boring for some people, but I think the reason why so many people, including ourselves, like PUBG is that you come back to the game, there's no perks. There's no like, oh, this guy's got a new ability I didn't understand. Or when did yeah. they put that in the game? Like, yeah, they maybe put a new gun or a new vehicle, but it's not something that's going to like completely confuse you. Yeah. It doesn't you come back the into the game, game, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Which is good and bad. Yeah. I mean, you could say maybe they're dull and they don't update enough, but I kind of like that. That it's like maybe I'm just we're older now, but I don't know. For me, I like that it's pretty straightforward and it's very no, fair. Yeah. Like most I fights, agree. you know, you're like that guy doesn't have like other than a decent and stuff. You know, there's like no advantage that that guy has over you, really. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't like uh, that's the one thing I had with Apex that was tough. It's like you could buy these characters, and like in reality, some of the characters you could buy were like better, like had just really good perks. You know, yeah. and you're like, well, I'm not paying for this shit. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, you know, if you only play it once in a while, you really lose the casual players, you know, and that's kind of hard because still, like, I bet you a large majority are casual players that play these games. You know, it's not. Yeah. No, really I, no, it is. At the end of the day, the main player base is casual. And uh, someone is actually complaining that that's what PUBG isn't catering to casual players. And maybe that's true. I was trying to think about that. I was like a pro player was coming out saying like, I think PUBG needs like cater towards like casual players and stop being like so hardcore, but I don't know what, what it is, but you're right. For most games, it's the casual players that make the game. You know, there's only so many pro players and streamers out there. Yeah. Um, obviously they help push the game forward, but yeah, no, yeah, I know. it's, uh, I, it's definitely, I don't know. It's hard to say. I guess it's just different strokes, though, for different folks, kind of, too. Yeah, 100%, man. I wanted to... Um, I pulled up Twitch, so if you guys listen to the podcast, first of all, thank you guys for uh, listening. Um, and Oh, we never dated. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. It's, it's, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Happy St. Patrick's it's Day. It's March 17th. Everyone was coming to the stream. I don't know if they were trolling me or not, but like, I didn't even know it was St. Patrick's Day. I think because of coronavirus, like nobody even remembered. <sighs> yeah, um, I think it's because like you don't go to work, so no one's like, wearing green. Like People were putting in the chat. I feel like you kind of yeah. just like missed that weird camaraderie kind of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It is. It's such. A, it's like yeah, when you're at school or at work, it's like a thing that um, 
everybody's talking about wearing green or whatever. And for sure, man. So I, we, we celebrated on stream. I did a giveaway and I wore green and <laughs> I wore my glasses and wore yeah, I saw. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if you listen to the podcast, we do a thing where almost every episode, I'm sure we've forgotten a few times, but we check out Twitch. What's being watched on Twitch as just a very, very, very rough parameter of like what's popular. Obviously this is depends on who's streaming, depends on what time of day it is. There's, I mean, this is not an accurate way to do it. It's just a rough estimate and it's uh, fun to check it out. So right now there are 300,000 people watching uh, modern warfare, uh, Dr. Disrespect, yeah. 43,000 viewers. Um, awesome. And he put out a hilarious thing the other day, uh, or today or yesterday, that you know I guess a lot of celebrities and obviously athletes, sports have come to a halt right now during this episode of the podcast with coronavirus in the U.S. And maybe everywhere, I guess there's yeah. no sports taking place. So a lot of athletes Pretty are much. like streaming. Celebrities are streaming uh, video games. So Dr. Disrespect had a thing. He was like uh, – you know, saying that the celebrities are trying to stream and he's like, what do they, you know, who do they think they are? And he's like, they're in my territory. And he was like, <laughs> he, he went on like a little bit of a rant that like, he was just going to own them all. Yeah. And, uh, it was great, man. He's incredible. Still the best out there. Yeah. I, think. I don't know how he's not number one, like streamer. It's like that guy, Tim, the tap man. I've watched him and I just like, don't, he's nice. I just don't, I, I, yeah, think, I've, like, I've, I haven't watched that play. guy, but. I agree with you. I think it's because for some people, they get triggered by Dr. Disrespect. Some people get triggered. Some people just don't like get tired of the character. I think some people don't like his character. I think it's, I think it's hilarious. Some people don't uh, like it though. Yeah. I just think it's supposed to like over the top. It's, it's just dramatized fun, you know? Yeah. It adds to the element of playing games, you know, different. It's fun. For sure, man. I love his highlight clips. I don't oh, know if you've ever dude, seen the sniper seen them, one that he posted. Sniper one today? So funny. He's like, so good, using man. thermals. He's like so skinny and pathetic. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like, how, he's like, how dare you submit a highlight clip of you sniping with a thermal? And everybody says skinny, pathetic. <laughs> so true though, because headshots. Yeah, yeah, it's so funny though, because again, it's like old school. Like, I, you know, sniping is fun because it's powerful and you have a regular scope. But when you have a thermal and you're sitting on a building, it just makes it feel different. You oh, know I, I mean? know, it's so. Yeah, I don't like the th- I don't like the thermal personally, but I, yeah, me there's been a lot of clips of the thermal. I'm like, it's so easy to see people. Yeah, no, like, I know. I mean, that's a strategy. You could just literally you have one gun with a thermal scope, like a sniper. You sit on a roof or something. Actually, Seeker was doing this. He was like, he could spot people, and then he would switch to snipe, and then switch to his AR, and you know exactly where everybody is. It's like, yeah. But I'm, I guess you could use a uh, perk or something to combat it but then again the perks are only in the loadout so it just becomes this like weird thing anyway so i want to get back into that yeah but, um all right so warzone has three hundred thousand viewers just chatting has one hundred sixty thousand in second then league of legends incredible 10 years straight still top three hundred sixty thousand viewers then uh counter-strike in fourth just counting doesn't even really just chatting doesn't even really count so yeah, csgo is the third game fortnite's the fourth game call duty's the fifth game and then uh, we got Apex is another row down, so top top maybe fifteen. And then Pug uh, Apex has got thirty thousand. Uh, I don't even see PUBG right now. Let's see. It's like at. it's it's pretty down there, but I mean it's not like it's still in the wow. Yeah, only twelve thousand, twelve point six thousand viewers right now. Yeah, there's not a lot of. Uh, I mean, everyone's kind of on the. Uh, is on a train like the bigger streamers that usually are streaming yeah PUBG, doing warzone so it happens yeah this is crazy um the there's only a few english streamers right now and like the first couple rows of like PUBG. yeah so and i, I wonder what i guess that makes sense mm-hmm. Is it morning time in Asia, I guess, right? There's a lot of like Europe, Europeans, but I mean, it's late for them, but I guess they just stream late. Yeah, they got nothing else to do. I'm probably a lot. I feel like in the just chatting, it looks like it's probably like a lot of Italian people just being like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, help. I'm trying to get out there. But so, yeah, I mean, Call of Duty taking over everything by storm for sure. I mean, it's definitely, uh, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to end up streaming it tomorrow. Um, I think. 
yeah. on stream. It's, I did PUBG mix today. It up, you know? Yeah. And stuff going back and forth though, especially going back to PUBG with the graphics and frames. I mean, oh, yeah. it's like it's not easy going back to uh pub. But oh, I was I'm still having fun playing PUBG. Um yeah. I don't know if you played it. Do you play PUBG recently at all? I didn't play it since Friday night when we played it. I just like this weekend's been a little bit crazy, you know. Yeah. So. I know you've been yeah, you got a lot of stuff going on. You think like you are you going to be super busy working from home? Or are you going to be like sneaking in some game time or you want to not say, cause your boss is going to listen. I'm kidding. No, nah, um, I mean, maybe you sneak some, but, uh, it's yeah. like this, it's just like everyone's getting settled in since everyone's working from home. It's tough. Cause everyone's like all on like the messenger. So it's like the only way we're communicating. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like before, you know, if you're working from home, it's kind of like you were, you weren't there, you know, but now everyone's working from home. So it's just like, they assume you're there kind of thing. I see. If that makes Interesting. sense. Totally. It's so different. I mean, we have like daily check-ins and stuff like that. Cause like we're like engineering stuff. So we're like, you know, does everyone have any problems with this? Like what's going on with this? I mean, it's only for 30 minutes, but it's just like, you know, there's just so, yeah, many so it's basically, I see you're, that's a good point. So like on a normal work from home day, sometimes like, ah, uh, I just not really home. I mean, not work working today. It's almost like a sick day, but then like, because everybody is, it's like, there kind of is just a regular work day for you then, I guess. Yeah. It's weird. It's definitely mm-hmm. different than normal work from home, to be honest with you. Yeah. I get that. That makes sense. That's interesting. It's, it's a very weird landscape. Like I had a meeting with uh, a person today and like, I'm going over stuff with them and like, yeah, like her you know she was like i have to go i have to make my daughter lunch you know because her kids are home and i was like oh it's okay you i mean know? that's so something it, crazy too because before i mean like yeah i mean people are kids are home from school parents got to yeah, deal with stuff it's kind of crazy not easy so yeah it's, i can't imagine having kids and stuff like that right now it's probably just so hard you yeah, know yeah, yeah school's yeah. online you're working it's got to be stressful that's such a good but point, man. It definitely is pretty, sounds like pretty stressful. All the all sure. the parents out there, all the moms. Shout out to all the parents, moms and dads out there for sure, man. Yeah. I know there's a lot of people in the stream kind of going through a similar thing too. So and maybe listen to the podcast. So shout out to you guys. Good yeah. luck with everything. And yeah. Stay healthy out there. Yeah, wash your sure. hands. Wash them yeah. hands, man. I mean, uh, and 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 clean yeah, your been... iPhones, and and whatever phone. Oh, you have. clean your damn phone too. Clean your yeah, clean your dirty phones. Yeah, man. I've been like alcohol swabbing my phone a lot more. Yeah, I have not done that yet. Mine's probably Corona. Dude, it's, oh. I mean, think about it. How much shit is probably on your phone? Oh, literal shit, probably. Probably, li- yeah, probably literal. Literal. Um, yeah, I've been I've been hitting that with alcohol swabs pretty often. I'm just gonna even like for recently clear. before Corona, but not more now. Increased more now. Oh yeah, I actually saw something funny that like, uh, um, wow, they. Like distilleries were making um hand sanitizer. <laughs> I, I oh my awesome. god, that's really funny. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, it's high so, alcohol. If you can get above seven, it's cleaning. Is that what it is? Yeah. It, there was some like there was some like fake news about that stuff, but I, at a certain point, it's got to be useful, right? Like, is it seventy percent or eighty or ninety? It's got to be at a certain point, right? Uh, I think it's seventy percent or something like that. Mm-hmm. It has to be above seven or no sixty percent, sixty eight or something like that interesting yeah it's crazy that like you can go from like everclear which is the highest percentage alcohol to like rubbing alcohol and not that far off from each other yeah everclear is like 95 percent alcohol which is like crazy to think about yeah it is i it's looked really it up hard. i was like if i had to make hand sanitizer would i do it and i was like if there's alcohol is gone like the isopropyl alcohol you can buy what else is there and it's like everclear and it's 95 percent alcohol yeah because all it is it's is wild. alcohol and like aloe you know so the pure but with something turns into a gel, I guess, right? Some kind of chemical or well, the uh, aloe vera turns it kind of, you know, you mix it with aloe vera. Oh, true. You could put that shit on your sunburn and probably burn with the alcohol in it. But yeah, you know, dude, when we were in, um, this is way outside, but when we were in Mexico, there was legit, um, an aloe vera plant Ooh, and, uh, did you rub it all we, over you? we got, um, burned pretty bad and we broke the plant like you, it has like the big leaves or not leaves or I don't know. It's not a branch. Whatever yeah. it is. And, um, we broke it and literally like out just came like the gel. <laughs> we were like, Oh my God. Whoa, like, they're just milking it, plants out it, here. It, bro. Like legit is that. Yeah. And it felt so good on the burn. So Ooh, I didn't know it was legitimately like that, but there you yeah. go. Yeah. Ooh. Lather me up in aloe. Um, so going back to this stuff, I, uh, we should talk about, um, 
I didn't read all through all these articles, so I don't want to be that guy. But um, Xbox Series X still still perplexed over that name. Um, you know, came out with more information. Yeah, let me. Um, I, I was confused though. Like someone came in the chat and money and Devin were like, "Oh, new information." But then I guess like I had read so much speculation that I thought all the information was already out. But I guess a lot of it was speculative. Um, and today, or I mean, recently they confirmed everything. And then, uh, today there are, or not even today, this week, there's been leaks about the PlayStation five, um, performance, which suggests that it's going to be similar. This article I'm reading here, um, Andrew found another one with different stats, but this one says that it's leaked at 11.0. 06 teraflops when Xbox can be at like 12 teraflops of performance. And obviously it's not yeah. just all that the teraflops and there's, there's more to it than that of, of clocking performance and, and uh, GPU units and megahertz speed and stuff like that. But um, I think there's the overall thing here is that it's going to be similar and who knows exactly until they, they fully release the stats. Yeah, so that's happening tomorrow at noon, I think, so when he's coming out. Is there, like, an official announcement tomorrow? Yeah. So Which that's tomorrow crazy. the 18th for anybody they, listening. Yeah, they announced this, like, today. So they waited until after Microsoft literally announced the Xbox Series X, and then now they're coming out with it, their information tomorrow. Uh-huh. It's just kind of, like, I hate Sony for that, to be honest. And it's, like, funny because I have a coworker that's a big Sony's fan, and he's just like, dude, he's like, I honestly... They just wait to see what Microsoft does and like, do we beat them? Do we beat them? And then like, then they get the information and like, okay, we're okay. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, totally. It's fine. I don't, it's not like, because like there is one article saying that the Xbox is more powerful. And then there's another one saying the leak is that the Sony PlayStation is more powerful than saying like Sony's next gen is pegged at 13.3 teraflops and Microsoft is oh, 4.1. Okay. And, and then you have, um, you know, another one saying Sony's at 11.2 or something like that. I so see. Yeah, I see. That's what I saw. To, in the, to in be the completely 11s. honest, it's not going to be any different. You're not going to see a difference. Um, it's not going to be a major difference. Yeah. No. I mean, in reality, like there's still a lot of other components that weigh in like the how they're, you know, using dynamic RAM and then the SSDs and all this stuff. There's a lot of different things. Um, but in reality, like if we just go by... And, we, and, and the thing is, at the end of the day, they're using the same fucking stuff. You know, they're all using AMD chips and, and they're really not doing anything very different. So uh, they're going to probably have the same performance, to be honest with you. They could be boosting it to 13.3 flops. You know what I mean? It, we don't yeah. know. But what we do know is what the Xbox Series X is. And I guess like we know that like this generation is going to be probably better than most people's desktop computers that they built, you know, which is kind of, I saw, I saw a thing on um, inside gaming today that, or yesterday that um, they compare the graphics. I think of the latest gears of war game on the series X, they did a test Mm -hmm. and that it was the same graphics of a modern computer with an RTX 2080, which I don't even have in my computer. Yeah, it's uh, better than know? mine. Yeah, we both have 2070s, right? So yeah, yeah, so exactly. So they said it's. They said that the GPU alone for that is seven hundred dollars. So for right now, for an RTX 2080. So you know, it's gonna. I, it'd be interesting to see what PlayStation does with that because Xbox seems like they went pretty hardcore, and yeah. I have to imagine that Xbox is manufacturing. It you know uh, capability is higher than Sony's maybe I'm uh, maybe not maybe Sony's is similar but Microsoft just has such a bigger it's such a bigger company with such a bigger backing yeah obviously they have a lot um, more cash yeah of course so it'll, you know it, it'll it'd be interesting to see but like you said at the end of the day they're gonna look somewhat similar so it's not gonna be yeah. a huge deal yeah and, and at this it, point it, with crossplay it it's like it's I guess it's just whatever platform and controller you like more it's less about like yeah, it's whatever right. has better the games you like, right? I mean, for uh, story games because everything else is yeah. going cross platform. Yeah, yeah. You get, like you exactly. Know, uh, so PUBG, Call of Duty, Apex. Isn't yeah, it crazy that they finally did that? What's it? It's like it's it's kind of crazy they finally did. It. It's like legalizing weed or something. Like they finally, like it's not everywhere, but crossplay is finally here. You yeah, have to stay. It seems like it finally happened. Yeah, and it's they're kinda, all, like cool. I said, like, they're all using AMD chips. Like, they're not doing anything fucking crazy. Yeah, 
You're right. It's not like someone's using some completely different technology or something. You're right. It's yeah. it's pretty simple. It's, yeah. yeah. There's it's, only it's so kinda, much you could do. Yeah, it's kind of almost archaic that there's there is still two. I mean, I guess it's good for competition, but it's almost weird that yeah. there still is two different companies yeah. fighting each other. It's good you good for competition it. though. Yeah, you need it. I mean, uh, it's always weird to me that Sony waits so long. Like, I guarantee you Microsoft released their price before them, and then Sony, like, three days later, will do this again. You know what I mean? Yeah. be like, oh, we're going to release our price, and it's going to be $10 cheaper or something. And you're just like, dude, like, god damn it. But it's not, <laughs> like, it's not that surprise. I Sony. I just, well, like, hate that business model, dude. I just think it's such a cowardly well, business what, what- model. What do you think works in the long run, though? So there, it looks. It, if you look at, look at it philosophically, it's like, what is it? I I think. I mean, I'm not sure, but I would guess that this is what their marketing department is looking at. Is is it worth it for us to come out with specs first, so we get like more media time in the beginning, or is it worth it to come out second and yeah. be like potentially better, potentially cheaper, so that you know people end up picking us in the long run, which is like what Sony's doing, right? I think. Yeah, I think Xbox is is doing a smart strategy because I've heard way more people talking about Xbox. Yeah, they're letting it out slowly. I, you know, honestly, if Sony has a marketing department that's talking about that, they should probably fire their fucking marketing department because you just explained their entire business model and you have no idea about marketing like that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, no, but I mean, but at the end of the day, <laughs> like, but I'm saying like, but they're they're kind of they know though that maybe they know that gamers are pretty are pretty based on the facts. So I'm just saying on the off chance, I guess. say they come out with a better machine at $10 cheaper, there's going to be a significant portion of gamers that just go, which one's better for the price? And they're going to just get PlayStation 5 over yeah. you know, Xbox potentially, potentially. Because that's what a I lot guess. of people do. They get the system based off what sounds better. You know? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't, I don't think, I, I don't think that like Sony knows like, the market any better than xbox does you know what i mean i just think that sony is just like i don't think they have the the same power that like microsoft has in terms of like microsoft just has a ton of money like they're probably oh, way more sure. willing to take a loss on this console than sony yeah, has, to be honest with yeah. you. oh 100 percent. so I would say. they would lose and i think that's kind of like part of it is that sony will just wait and it's not like I don't think that they know any better than anybody else. Like I don't think Sony has like amazing marketing or anything like that. Because in reality, yeah. I think that Microsoft giving you a little bit at a time has like even made someone that I work with that's a Sony fan like he is always like, dude, the Xbox looks pretty cool. Like you know what I yeah. mean? Like you're mm-hmm. getting in that head of someone. And he's like, tomorrow is gonna be cool, but like you know, he's still like, it's just you have someone thinking about it that didn't think about it before. Right. Yeah. So, oh, for sure, man. It's also kind of like an old school strategy. I'm just thinking about this now. Like it's definitely old school. It's definitely what they used to do. Like then, like when it was like Microsoft, Nintendo, you know, drew, you know, all that stuff at once. Yeah. No, for sure, man. But you know, what's weird. It's like, you know, even with games, it's kind of like, with these games you would see a preview of a game like two years before it's being made like a new zelda or whatever yeah. famous game like halo and then you're like well that's not coming out for two years and then mm. nowadays and it's like then maybe people forget about it or whatever but then it seems like the new this new 2020 or modern 2019 version of marketing where like apex legends just says oh tomorrow worth apex legends coming out tomorrow you've never heard of it before but it's free download it and so many yeah. people did it's kind of like you know, like now for if you think about it, by the time the Xbox Series X uh, drops, people have known what it looks like for how over a year, right? Like, yeah. so it's kind of weird that we've seen it for so long, but then we still have to wait so long too. You know? Yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely it's a lot. Definitely a good point. Did you did, did you see that they're gonna they uh, partnered with Seagate and they're gonna do? Um, so it's coming, I think, with one terabyte, and then they're gonna mm-hmm. have an SSD uh, terabyte that you can buy and just yeah. stick them into your xbox that's pretty cool i like yeah that. i mean the and the point is like people were commenting that's like negative but in reality like it's smart because you're getting the maximum performance ssd that you need externally too you know what i mean so you can expand yeah. your ssd and still have the same performance as the with the external one as the internal one dude and i was thinking i mean they probably spent so much money again on the gpu cpu all the stuff like they can't just give you 10 terabytes off the bat or something like no. then the price is going to be too much money so it's smart like let's get the product in at hopefully somewhat of an affordable price 
and then um, digital download stuff. If you don't need it, temporarily delete it off your hard drive. And if you got to get the, you know, a year later, if you want to spend more money and get a terabyte or two terabyte storage, then yeah. go for that. Yeah. I, I wonder how cool. Sony cool. will handle that, handle that because in reality, dude, yeah, like all that stuff is very expensive and, and like the new SSD f stuff that they have is expensive. And if yeah. you're going to have like this system that run is so heavily dependent on it and games are going to be big you know what I mean? Like running an 8K resolution game or whatever these games are going to be next year, say in 20, March 2021, they're going to be taking up a lot of space on your hard drive, to be honest. And if you don't yeah. have ex the expandable space with the same capabilities, you're you're already hindering yourself really quickly. You know? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You got to have an insane amount of space, or it's got to be expandable, 100. Yeah. percent Yeah, you're right. So like, think about it, the 4K video you, you have on your computer. Like, it takes up so much more space. You know? totally so yeah I've, I've just powered through so many terabytes of like footage and my drone footage 4k like it's crazy how much space it takes up yeah so even a lot of 1080 footage it's just a lot yeah it's just so i i'm curious of how they addressed it maybe they put in two terabytes or something maybe they don't have the same ssd type of thing and that's where they get it if you there's a good video for like the guy that was putting together the microsoft xbox series x and all this stuff like with the guys like that built it and it was kind of interesting like how they put it, he puts it together and, and everything and it's it an official cool. video from xbox or something or someone breaking down in like an xbox no, there was like a, he was at the xbox lab or whatever and he was okay, was okay. In there. he was just like putting it together piece by piece and then put I it see. in the thing and then he showed uh the difference between like uh switching games like that game um the what game pause called? thing where you can pause the game. And yeah, then like the, you can game. jump the game, the game, and it's like yeah. incredibly quick. Like it's really cool. Um, and the loading times too. Like they showed the Xbox One X and then the Xbox Series X next to each other, and like state of decay, it went from one scene to another, and the loading time is ridiculously fast. Wow. Yeah. 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 I think uh, I think I saw that where they had the. Yeah, the state of decay. It was like fifty seconds versus like seven seconds or something mm. like that, right? Yeah. I mean, the Xbox, low, the PS5 will probably have the same capability in that regards. It's just that's also like I think the game um, pausing type of thing, though, like jumping from game to game, that's really a software thing, and also your hardware, you know, because they have yeah. to like cache it to memory in a way that like you can just jump back in or, or actually like it's not caching it it's actually putting it in the ssd and then being able to call it back really quickly so they're doing some unique softwareing in there too that makes it kind of uh cool to think about too you know yeah i hope it uh hope it like runs smoothly and everything dashboard and like everything's good for xbox you know It'd be interesting yeah. to see what they do too. You don't like then, their uh, dashboards. I never really had an issue with their dashboard. The dashboard now I, I like, but uh, some of the stuff is still kind of, you know, it's it's better now, but some of the stuff is was messed up. It got it was pretty laggy for a little while. Um, I guess it's not a big part of it. I don't know. I, I used to, yeah, I used to hate. I mean, when Xbox One first came out, it, it was pretty messed up. I mean, they went through a couple iterations to get where they are now. So it was it was worse, but. Um, I wonder if, uh, you know, I was thinking about possibly getting the next generation PlayStation. I haven't owned a PlayStation since PlayStation 2. But now with all this cross-play... How dare you? I don't think I would get one now. No, it's probably not worth it, it for you. I mean, I don't think I mean, it's... I, 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 mean, I would definitely get Xbox first. For yeah, me, you might get one later. Platform, I would but, say get uh, one later. But yeah, I don't think dishing out the whatever number they're going to charge for it when you can play most of the games you play are cross-platform anyway yeah. yeah i'm not even really into the single player games so i don't really care i just thought it'd be interesting to check it out but yeah yeah i don't think i'm gonna have to do that now yeah i mean that's the thing i don't have time to do that i really want to get cyberpunk 2077 and play that yeah. that's gonna look really cool and um, did, did we talk about the last time we did a podcast of what they're gonna do with that game how they're gonna uh if you buy buy it on Xbox, they'll give you a new copy when you get the Xbox Series X. I don't forget. Yeah, it's gonna that. be free. You don't have to pay yeah. anything. So that's like, it was cool. like me feel that if you know you buy a game, you should have it, you know, forever or whatever. So they're giving it to you for free. Yeah, it's smart, especially because it got delayed. I mean, it's a, it's an awkward time for games to launch. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that's part of it. I'm sure that they were like probably maybe having some issues running it on the legacy stuff, and maybe they were like, you know what, let's, you know, I have no yeah. idea what they're doing, but 
I think that they have so many options now in terms of developing on this new platform that maybe it was just easier for them to wait and just have more time on the newer Xbox because the dev kits are out there. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I am excited that there's like there, it seems like this transition, it's almost like Xbox one X two that like, it seems like every game, right. is going to be playable and they're just better. Like it's going to be like the, just a nice upgrade and everything will work. And hopefully over time, more and more people will get that platform and, like uh, it will just work out pretty well. Then people who are really, you know, kind of behind or like budget, really budget conscious about it. Like hopefully yeah. they can upgrade to an X and then their experience will be better. And it's, it, it is, I mean, Microsoft's got to get a plan with all that right now. It's pretty smart the way they did yeah. that at least. Yeah. They've been very transparent about like, if you have, it's going to be playable on every Xbox game, you know, it's not, you're not going to have a, to upgrade if you don't want to. That's a nice thing. I think that, you know, that, my friend at work was really kind of getting it is that like he, he doesn't know if you need to upgrade or not and i'm sure you won't have to honestly with sony but it's just nice that microsoft's been very transparent about that since the beginning yeah they they have been yeah that's pretty nice um so i think that pretty much covers that i mean i'm definitely excited to see some more information i guess tomorrow you said at noon playstation 5 is going to launch so i'll pay attention to it or maybe three o'clock eastern standard time it's probably in pacific standard time Maybe or I what? I think so. I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah, okay. I could look it up real quick. That's no, okay. We can we can check it out after. Excuse but yeah, PS5. just be on the lookout for um that information. Uh it says four PM GMT. I don't know what that means. It can be found. GMT is uh the UK time, I think. So GMT um, is London, right? GMT is it's the Greenwich mean time. So Yeah, so that means it's I think uh twelve o'clock. US, it's it's tw- it's twelve it's twelve forty three so yeah so it'll be if it's at, yeah twelve o'clock then exactly yeah okay interesting yeah so that's cool I'll, I'll definitely look out for that I'll probably be streaming it around noon tomorrow so maybe we could take a break and see or see or people will be commenting in the uh, stream about that um, also just if if you have anything else you want to add I was just gonna say that uh, mm. I've listened to that podcast with the guy who worked at ID Software from Joe, uh, Joe Rogan. Um, interviewed yeah. him. I think his name is Hugo Martin or something like that. And uh, he came on promoting uh, Doom Eternal. He was like the creative director behind Doom, Doom Eternal, which is coming out yeah. on um, March 20th. And what's crazy is, again, like I didn't even know that that game was coming out until the Joe Rogan was on the podcast because I there was a Doom that came out in 2016 that um, I really loved. I played the story and it wasn't even really much of a story. It was legit just like insane just shooting everybody um constant action and then the multiplayer was actually really fun it reminded me of like my childhood playing unreal and like crazy games just like people's limbs blowing over the place Um, yeah so anyways this new iteration is coming out on in three days from now but um i don't know if i'm gonna get it though you know it seems doesn't seem too different yeah you don't get a lot of time to play other games you know yeah, I mean, I mean, honestly, yeah, I, I spend a lot of time grinding. I mean, for the average person, you're busy. You only have so many games you can play. For me, I'm like, you know, always grinding on pub because trying to get like the you know most information, newest level, finish the pass, this and that. So, um, yeah. But uh, you know, what's funny is, man, that podcast. Um, I, I don't want to get too far into it, but um, Jordan was kind of being a little. He seemed a little rude sometimes. This guy. But um, on the flip side, Joe Rogan was an- asking him some questions and he didn't have like a lot of answers for it. And he was like kind of almost kind of to me gave some insight on like why Doom isn't a super popular game. Like it, I'm sure it's popular on hardcore plan- fan base. And I'm sure it will do like well, it will sell copies. But like Doom yeah. could easily be like a success like Call of Duty or something like that, you know? Maybe not because it's pretty graphic, but it could be yeah. way bigger than it is, you know? And he was like, uh, are you guys talking to a lot of gamers and professional players? And the guy was basically kind of said like mm, a little bit, but not really. He's like, how much feedback do you guys take? And, and do you have like, did you keep death match in the game? He was like, no, we're doing this weird thing. And I'm like, I don't know. I it, just seemed, it seemed off. I just don't get why, like not everything needs to be battle Royale. I get that. But like, what are you doing making like base? And it took them four years to make this game. And it sounds like it's just like the same thing. It's like call of duty, you know, 
it's like the difference yeah. between Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and 3. Like, I don't know. I just am a little confused by it. It seems like these guys put so much time and work into these games and they work so hard and they do such a good job. But like, it's just, yeah. I feel like they need, they're not like uh, in touch with like what's going to be super popular. I don't know. Yeah. You know I, I mean? wonder if they're like their own worst enemies. You know what I mean? Like they're just so passionate about what Doom was that they don't like push it to what Doom could be or something. Or you know what I mean? I don't know if that's the case. I'm just kind of spitballing here. Yeah, 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 yeah. It just seems it just seems off because I mean the reason why not that I know that it's not going to be popular, but when I'm, my past experience was in 2016. This game came out. It was dope, and then I made a video about a week later saying that do multiplayer was dead already and that video is like one of my most watched videos because everybody clicks on it because the multiplayer was dead right away like i couldn't get a game there was two people in the game and i'm like this is sad how much time yeah. do they put in this game put into it and a week later there's no multiplayer on it because overwatch came out like all this stuff i don't know it's yeah like they probably just didn't do a good job following through or, yeah or, ha- or like got advertised and- fortunately like well, fortunately and unfortunately, they need to get streamers on board to get these games. You know, to really advertise them. Because this hundred percent man. Get this stuff from. It's where it's at, dude. I mean, you could cancel your marketing budget and just have Doctor Disrespect play this game for or, pay him to pay, play for one week. Or Blitz Five, or, you know. Yeah, or Blitz Five. Exactly, man. For real. But honestly, it is a. Uh, it's actually a genius idea, man. And. With that, dude, we can call yeah, it. You got anything I mean, else you want to add? It definitely proves to be true. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, a ton of people like people play games based off of like watching these. I mean, videos, Escape from know? Tarkov, all this stuff. I had no so. idea what Escape from Tarkov was. Not that I play it, but everyone started playing it because streamers played it, and then more streamers played it, and then I just think, down spirals from there. I think that game's gonna go away pretty quickly. To be honest with you, it, it's yeah, I mean, it was really big, and now it's like you don't really see anyone big streaming it. There's still a lot of viewers. Look at it, still be a lot of viewers, but I don't yeah. think it's like gonna be the long term thing. Yeah, I mean, but I don't know. I'm not an expert in that for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what's funny is it makes me. I'm not gonna call out anybody, but I see some people online, some famous streamers and stuff like that, and you know they they'll like they hate on PUBG. They'll 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 be like, oh, PUBG's broken. I'm playing Escape from Tarkov now. This game's perfect or whatever. And then, then they've been playing Escape from Tarkov for a month. And then and then a month later, you see Escape from Tarkov's broken. I don't like this thing. Why aren't they fixing this thing? Like, uh, like come I on. Know. Get, I know. Get a grip, dude. These are small. Some of them are small companies. And, and it was just so funny. They think like, what do you think? The, like that game's just going to be perfect now too. But then once you play a game, you see what's wrong with it. Yeah. You know? And only big games, even Call of Duty. Another thing is like people uh, saying like Call of Duty is good. Why isn't PUBG good? I'm like, dude, do you not understand that like PUBG? It's like first of all, it was made three years ago. Four, you know, it's, they probably started production on PUBG four or five years ago now. And um, Call of Duty, they've been doing for years. Call of Duty's been made for thousands of years. I'm kidding, but you know what I mean. Like it's no, they have a four it's just a different works, you know, and just keep fucking rolling it out. I mean, their battle royales are a new thing, but yeah, they yeah. know what they're Call, doing. Call of Duty is a Ferrari, and PUBG is us making a car in our garage, dude. Like, it's not even in the same planet. Yeah. You know, just because they're in the same race, they didn't, they're not on the same planet. And it's like, yeah. It just is what it is, man. Yeah, it's not, it's not the same, but I understand. I get it for sure. Yeah, 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 man. Um, anything else, dude, you want to add? Um, uh, Call of Duty. Talked about some new games, coronavirus, Warzone. Oh. I mean, you talked about that PUBG. Not really. I think that's not really that pretty much covers it, man. Um, yeah, there's like 30 days left in the season of PUBG. I'm still into it. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people are hardcore into PUBG still, so that's good. Um, new update on PC tonight, right now, actually. The new update is happening. So oh, really? hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully we'll get that update on console in like a week or two. It's got the uh, the rocket launcher. Um, why am I blanking? Oh, the uh, changes to the ump, the Tommy gun, M249, DBS out of the crate. So I'm excited for that. That'll be fun Yeah. to see the rocket launcher. I mean, they got some stuff. huge backlash about the whole crate thing. Oh, my God. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah It'll be interesting to see, though. 
I don't think they needed to make the M249 a world spawn, but whatever, dude. I don't know. <laughs> no, I think I agree with you. I was on that side. I liked where, why make it a world spawn? Why not just, if you want a new LMG in the game, why not just code in another one? An, an M60 or not, I guess it's kind of is like that, but like it's just a different gun. Just a different, a different one, LMG. Yeah. But uh, maybe, you know, maybe they have some other stuff planned that they just haven't really announced yet. You I know? guess, yeah. Well, people got hurt though. They were like, "Are you kidding me?" Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, on the flip, on one side, I keep saying on the flip side today. It's like the word of today. On one side, you know, it's going to be fun to use that gun more because it's sick. It is getting a nerf. But I'm, you know, if I had to pick a side, I pick the side like it wasn't broken. It was basically the most perfect crate weapon. Like so exciting to get it not super easy to use at least on console that yeah. is uh, it's like the perfect crate weapon really strong yeah. but like that in the awm like you get a sniper it's snipers aren't the easiest to use but if you hit it you're dead m249 in the same kind of way yeah i agree i don't, I don't get their logic but whatever yeah and as i uh, said that I, we just got a tweet i just got a tweet here i get notifications when PUBG tweets that uh, pc players maintenance has now started and is expected to last for seven hours there you go Ex- expect only a couple things to break expect <laughs> expect a few things to break yeah and but... then uh shout out to wd40 he did a poll on twitter here at an evil can wd40 sorry shouting him out would you spend 500 plus on a new Xbox Series X coming out this year? We'll end on this. Would you spend $500 plus, Andrew? Yes, yep. saving up. Nope, buy a PC. Yes, I'd buy it. Would you buy it for 600? I I guess I would. Yeah, I'd probably spend a, a 600 on it. I I mean, honestly, I I probably would spend more than 600 just because I'm an idiot. But yeah, yeah, I I'd um. Spend. I would spend 500 and possibly um, 600 pos. I don't know. I well because I stream. Honestly, I would probably pay almost any amount for to get the latest Xbox hardware because it's my my business. But <laughs> um, but you know, just like average. Yeah. So I gotta say yes. Yeah. Just yeah. Just say yes. I'll just say yes. I'm just there. a loser. So yes. 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 I just like having new shit like that. Like, I just like the hype around it. I like getting it. You know what I mean? I just think it's yeah. like a fun revitalizing moment, you know, to have yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, it is, man. Gets you it hype. Is. It makes you want to play. It sits you down, you know? For sure, Gets man. the juices flowing. Exactly. You know, it makes you go and, uh... bounce on your boy stick, you know? It's all hype. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm excited, dude. I'm excited for the next Xbox and some more gaming. Uh, speaking of that you want to let everybody you want to thank everybody yes thank you everybody the, and thanks for stopping by the final circle oh, shit i said thank, it wrong yeah. thanks for i don't even know what thanks we for joining us in the final circle wow let's go final circle baby that? um yeah maybe we'll see if i cut that out kidding um, you don't really have to but yeah yes yeah, that was embarrassing so good all right dude i'm gonna uh i think i might play some cod i don't know so all right thanks for uh, doing Ooh. the episode man one more and we're at 40 so yeah, we're almost we're there. there. <laughs> All right, thank you, everybody. Wherever we're going. Later. Peace.